Our guest is making a record fourth appearance on the program, so we could probably do it without uh, Kevin or I. But before we go any further, go ahead. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Looks he's good. got a great name. I know that. He's got. He's yeah. got a great name. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Urkel. <laughs> I, uh, I wish I dressed like this. So I'm gonna take some Car bets. Carlton. You can rock it, man. <laughs> Banks, you can, yeah. you can yeah. rock it. Yeah. You can do it. This is Van, uh, right? Uh, Come we'll on. Switch after the show. Van. Exactly. <laughs> you got any uh, club music you want to spring on me? What do you mean? We'll get to that. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> terrible, that a terrible first question. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Shot, oh, shot, man. shots. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that yeah, in a second. Yeah, we'll get to that. All yeah. right. We'll uh, let it marinate for a little yeah. bit. Listen, it was a tough loss tonight, but you have enough veteran savvy to put it behind you, so uh, I want you to just to look serious for a sec. Perfect. <laughs> right there is the death stare. Vern Fiddler uh, was trying to uh, imitate last Sunday in Dallas, and it set your coach into gales of laughter. There's the death stare, or the imitation of it at least. I'm not sure how accurate it was. What did you think of it? What a loser, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought uh, you, you see a little, you, know, you see about a couple seconds of it, but <laughs> the thing is that the guy did it for like 20 seconds, and he was uh, his teammates were changing for him, and he was still doing it, and everybody's looking at this guy like, what's the matter with him? So... Um, I know. I don't know what to say about this guy. There's, there's something wrong with him. There's an email from John at Oxford University. So oh this is an gosh. educated man we're yes, talking about here. Right. Uh, what kind of laughing juice was Elaine Vigneault drinking? I don't know, but uh, uh, the French guys laugh at the easiest things. So uh, <laughs> you don't see Coach V laughing behind the bench too often. But uh, you know, he, he likes the toilet humor, I guess. <laughs> are, are you concerned at all, Kevin, about uh, a possible outbreak of players trying to do the BX at Death Stare the league over? You know what? He's not the first guy to do it, unfortunately. Uh. There's a couple other uh, Muppets around the league that have been trying to do it. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure it's not, he's not the last guy now after this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, honestly, I don't even know what the face is that oh I do, apparently. Gosh. But uh, I see my son do it once in a while, yeah. and I think that's, Cole that's, does it. that's probably what they're really? talking about. Really? Ah, okay. Yeah, flares the nostrils, and uh, <laughs> yeah, not as ugly as that, but he uh, he does it. He doesn't have the eyes, man. No, he doesn't have the eyes. Like guy, like he, he's an ugly guy to start with, and then he's doing that face on top of that. Yeah, so he's <laughs> making it worse for himself. Yeah, absolutely. Not doing himself any favors. All right, for as well as it's gone for the Vancouver Canucks this year, what was the mindset of the team heading into the trade deadline? Were you thinking that not much would happen? I don't think we, we expected what happened for sure. Maybe a, a few minor additions here or there, maybe you know a couple of veterans here or there, but um, took me by surprise, I know that, but you know I, I like the way our team looks going forward. Speak a little bit about Cody and about Zach, what they bring to the table, because obviously fans have their own perception, but from you being one of the leaders inside the room, what do you see in each player? Well, the thing with Cody is I think he came a long way. You know, if, if we would have gave him to the Sabres, uh, you know, maybe last year, I don't know if it would have been a, the, the same. You know, he came a long way this year, you know, and, and speak about this, like we, we changed his whole wardrobe and everything. And nice. Like, oh, yeah, he was was embarrassing. it was embarrassing. Are you serious? It was embar Come on. embarrassing no. at the beginning of the year. No. So uh, all the way from his boxers to his uh, <laughs> shoes. So you guys gave him a makeover. Absolutely. So nice. we're, we're proud of the, the product now, <laughs> and we're proud to, to send him off to Buffalo. Here you go. Oh, and man. Then coming no in. disrespect to Buffalo, but are you suggesting he'll be the best dressed man in Buffalo? He could be. <laughs> on that I don't know the team that well, but yeah. uh, the city, yeah, he'll be one of the best dressed walking around. Does Zach Cassian need wardrobe lessons as well? It's too early it's to early. tell. Yeah, yeah. It's it's I haven't seen his boxers yet, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's too early to tell. Joe but man. I know a good tough Ontario boy. Usually they, they know how to dress. Here's a tweet from Josephine Chan. Ask Kevin why he loves milk hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. that was one of those things where I, I sold out for 200 bucks. Uh, That's it? Oh, 200 bucks, 200 bucks. Though, uh, right? Okay, okay. We got to keep it. Yeah, we I gotta said, keep you it know real. what? Like you're, you're asking the wrong guy here. I'll say anything on camera. You know, <laughs> you, you dangle 200 bucks in front of Who me. Who put you up to it? Yeah. Twins. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The twins, uh, I'm kind of their, their guy where they want to say something. The twins, like, they like the practical jokes and all that stuff, but they won't do it themselves. So they right. get guys like me to they do They pay. It. They make enough cake. So you had to pay. work the words milk hot dogs into an interview. How easy is that? Yeah. Well, I just did it for you. Absolutely. So. Are so you getting another 200 for no, this? No, it's 100 weird. of which should be mine? No, no, no. You're not getting anything. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Zach Cassian has got, uh, he's got skill, uh, but the trade clearly is being interpreted by most people as uh, giving up Cody Hodgson's skill for his uh, Zach Cassian's physicality and to go one step beyond that the suggestion has been if you had a player like Cassian playing the way the Canucks hope he will in the Stanley Cup final he gets a nice goal and assist and he can play the game and on top of that he's a big mean guy and and he 
you can't have enough of those guys on your team. Um, Cal Clutterbuck uh, was uh, tied up with Dan Hamhuis. Trying to get at Hamhuis. You're tied up with the official. And look what at an that. arm. You, what an arm. Yeah, you gave uh, it right to him. You threw the right wow. at him. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things where... Uh, Played softball. Did, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've dang, you know, I dabbled in a little bit here or there, but... Sure. Uh, Justin Morneau sent me a text after the game. No, oh, seriously? Yeah. Yeah. He's a buddy of mine, and, nice. he, and he saw it. Obviously, he was in Minnesota. He sent me a text saying that was a nice uh, fastball there. I said that was my slider. <laughs> Hi, bud. Hey, is that Cole? <laughs> Hi, Cole. Hey. You okay? How you doing? <laughs> okay, it's okay. It's what okay. do you say? He keeps taking his ball. Somebody keeps uh, taking his ball. You know, this is Fight a... Fight for it. <laughs> oh, let's see. <laughs> Start him early. Right there. Cole's Battle a, for it. Yeah. A, that presents us with the perfect segue into the next topic, because this is your first appearance on the show since the Stanley Cup playoffs last year, yeah. and our first opportunity to ask you about the biggest goal, perhaps, in your career, the mm -hmm. double OT winner against San Jose, which ended the series, and very few people knew that you'd actually scored it. You did, and so did Cole. Cole did, yeah. He was watching the game at home on the couch, and we, we obviously didn't bring him to the game. But uh, after the goal, it was it was chaos there, and, and nobody knew what happened. And, and he apparently he saw it the whole way. So he said, "That was my dad who scored. That was number three. So he's got hockey sense. You're pretty sure of absolutely. that. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. No, no, nobody else in the building knew. So that's yeah, pretty impressive many. that he knew. That's yeah. that's impressive. Edler off the stanchion to you on the point. Could you make that work again if you tried? Right at the whole way. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we could do it again if we, if we tried. No big deal. It was a uh, very nice bounce. <laughs> just to underline how most people lost sight of the puck, uh, we're going to listen here to, to uh, Corey Schneider, who was mic'd for Canucks TV, and he had no idea what happened. Here it is. <laughs> oh, that's uh, great. A couple like stinky gloves. No Nothing like gloves. the stinky gloves, too. We're now I think Luongo here in a moment is going to explain him what happened. It, this just reminds me of uh, the fact that you have a degree in finance from Bowling Green, and Corey's got one from uh, Boston, Boston College. College. Boston College. Boston College. Um, yeah, I think you both, you're honorable all academic, and he's been on a couple of all academic teams. Uh, are you smarter than Corey? I don't know. Uh, that's, he's obviously a very smart guy. He gets those crosswords done pretty quickly. <laughs> USA Today, if you want to use that as a measuring stick. But uh, uh, the college guys are definitely the smartest guys in this team. Let's make a, a tough and, uh, I guess, serious turn here. You're actively involved in mindcheck.ca, which is the Canucks' great online initiative to educate people about mental illness. And let's watch. Someone who experienced depression. I know it isn't a choice. It's not a weakness, self-inflicted, or a result of not trying. Sometimes you just can't get over it. It won't just go away. Pretending it isn't happening doesn't help. Talking about it does. Getting support early can make the difference. Helping someone we care about is not a burden. I pledge to learn the signs. I will not judge. I will have compassion. I will reach out, listen, talk, help, and find help. My name is Kevin Bieksa. I will not stay silent. Add your voice at mindcheck.ca. Well, clearly your heart is in that announcement because you were a very close friend of Rick Rippon, whose uh, death uh, was the impetus for the Canucks establishing the website to begin with. What's it mean to you to have Rick Rippon remembered in that way? Oh, it means a lot. It's obviously it's a project very near and dear to my heart, and I had a big hand in it from the beginning, from you know the development of the website to, to obviously moving forward to the, the story on the on the website and. and you know, I'm very happy with uh, the success of it so far. There's, you know, we got a lot of visits from people. There's, uh, there's a lot of awareness out there. I receive uh, numerous tweets daily about how much the websites help, currently help people. So it, it's, uh, it's encouraging to see how much it's helping people in such a short time, and it's only going to get better. Now, Rick, what, you, you were one of the first players, probably the first teammate that Rick confided in. Yeah, I was. He. You know, he, he didn't tell a lot of people about it, I think. This is when he took his first leave of absence, mm -hmm. right, from the Canucks? Yes, yeah. yes, it was, mm -hmm. and uh, even before that. So, you know, he, you know, one of the things we're trying to do is get more awareness out there and get people, you know, most of the time they're telling their friends anyways. Uh, you know, some people are keeping it themselves. In Rick's case, he, he told me and, and Craig Heisinger, and we were able to move forward and go through the appropriate steps. But, uh, you know, it, it, it was a struggle for him. You know, uh, your attempts to help Rick really knew no boundaries whatsoever. He lived with you and Katie for a while, right? Yes, he did. Yeah, he, he lived with us, obviously, and, and 
you know we did what we could for him yeah. and uh, that, that's what you do that's what any friend does for another friend and um, we helped him through a tough time and and he got better there for a while and like I said, he, he was on the wrong end of that fight, though. You know, the essential point here, Kevin, it seems to be that there's no shame in mental illness. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the question is, how differently do you view mental illness now, um, knowing what you knew about Rick? Yeah, well, I've obviously educated myself uh, a lot more about it. And, uh, you know, there's that stigma out there that, it, that it's a weakness. And, uh, you know, much like cancer used to have that and, and other diseases, AIDS, you know, now we're trying to move forward and, and alleviate that. and. I think we're, we're taking a major step forward. Well, listen, you got the death stare, but if it was a choice between that and your sense of compassion, I'd say uh, compassion wins out every time. So Kevin Bieksa is our guest on After Hours. And more with the Canuck defenseman when we come back live to Rogers Arena in Vancouver. Back live at Rogers Arena in Vancouver, Kevin Bieksa of the Canucks is our guest who knew that he was such an aficionado of club music, a contemporary music buff. Let's go back to round two <laughs> of uh, last spring Stanley Cup playoffs, Canucks versus Nashville, when you got the guy from uh, Hockey Night in Canada totally unaware. What's the one thing more than anything else you need in the third if you're to close this out tonight? <sighs> shot, 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 shots. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, let you explain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's self-explanatory. You know, it, it was funny that you had no idea what I was talking about. Yeah, Scotty. What, what was, what You're was up I? on a lot of things, man. Well, I I listen, shot, that shot, one. Shots is the name of and the chorus of a club hit by LMFAO. See? And yeah. if you don't know what that stands for, uh, look it up. But uh, why in the name of double OT would yeah. you ever have thought I would have known what you were talking about. No, I, I didn't think you'd know what I was talking about. I, I don't know why I said that. I obviously am way too comfortable in front of the microphone. <laughs> but the, the funny thing is, the next yeah. time I saw him, he had done his research online and he <laughs> knew, serious? and he started spitting out some lyrics, other lyrics no to the song. Yeah, and it's a pretty <laughs> provocative song. It is. To hear it coming yeah. out of his mouth right. was hilarious. Well, the first line of the song is, uh, when I walk in the club, all eyes on me. But of course, the next line that I would sing would be, because I look like the liquor inspector. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <there you> <laughs> That interview went viral the next day. It was all yeah. over the Twitterverse, and it was online that uh, that you had gotten me. But anyway, I'm uh, Got thanks to you. To you. Hard I, hard I am now the hippest man on hockey night in Canada. So yeah, yeah. Thanks. Clearly. Thanks for your help. Um, <laughs> Here's a tweet from a guy named Marty Bieksa. You might have heard of him because <laughs> he's actually your brother. Uh, Kev, what do you make of your inability to move up uh, the Bieksa family golf rankings this past year? Too many shots, 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 shots. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, he's got Speaking too much, he's got too much time on his hands. Funny thing is, uh, you know, I, I judge. Marty. Yeah, there's Marty. <laughs> I judge the golf tournament on, in five categories. You know, golf, consumption, wrestling not throwing your clubs into the woods and water, and not crashing the golf cart. So if you go by those five things, I'm the best in the family by far. And okay, so your, your family, <laughs> I, I'm guessing yeah. all of them at one time or another have been guilty of all of those things or some of them? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, there's been a couple of cart crashes, a couple. Marty, uh, the helicopter king. Nice. Throw him under the bus uh, right now. Can't go, let it, give it to him. Give can't it to go him. three holes with uh, tomahawking his uh, driver <laughs> into the woods. So he finishes around with three clubs in his bag. Uh, <laughs> so you're the best golfer in the family based on no, that criteria. Yeah. I, based I, on I, com I, combined, I combined everything the best, I think. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Are you finally on Twitter? Uh, I am, yes. He's been yeah. on there, Scotty. Yeah, all, okay. all season. Tell him. Uh, well, I'm going to have to follow lost cause. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, tell him. No, Work listen, look know. at me handling the tweets here. I know Thank what I'm talking about. Yeah. Anyway, um, there was a campaign here last year by our friends at Pass It to Bullis. It's one of the blogs that uh, is widely read here about the Canucks uh, to get you on Twitter. They said, I think that, uh, that, uh, that their theme was Twitter needs juice because this is the kind of quote that up to that point, Twitter was missing. Yeah. Um, th we've picked a few of, of yours. So... Um, this is a Ryan Kessler, Kessler's clothing line. Proceeds go to a translator for Alexander Burroughs. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's wrong. That's, yeah. A, good, that's a good one, though, <laughs> that's, eh? so, that's, <laughs> that's so wrong, though. The thing it's is, so uh, wrong. we're sitting around at the beginning of the year, and, and Kess was actually the first one to send a tweet saying, as soon as I get 10,000 followers, I would, I would have my first tweet. I set up an account in the summer just for family and stuff like that, and then after that, I got to 10,000 pretty quickly, and then I started getting hate tweets from everybody saying, own up to your end of the bargain, and they started giving it to me, so I had to 
had to do I, it. I had to go, yeah. They had, had to, to do it at that point. How are you enjoying it? How are you liking the Twitterverse? That's okay. You yeah, know, you're I, a witty cat, though. It should kind of play to you I pick, well. I pick my spots, all right? Yeah, you have to. I'm a spot picker, for sure. So yeah. I, and then every day, and I said to you before, I don't like, uh, I don't go on after, you know, big win the night, crowd was buzzing. I hate that kind of stuff. So <laughs> I like to put a little more, put a little more <laughs> thought, thought into, into it. it. Yeah. Uh, here's another quote, <laughs> and I don't know if you ever tweeted this, but, well, I, actually, this is about Alexander Burroughs. He lightens up the room sometimes. We laugh when he's not even trying to tell a joke. Now, that's just cruel. You know well, what? They that's tangy. Well, I don't know why we're picking on Burr here, but these aren't even tweets. These no, no, those are quotes. Yeah, these yeah. are quotes. Yeah, yeah. 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 so it's fine. Let's this start, was the campaign again. that was run by Passa Taboulas to get you on Twitter. Ah, uh, well, don't, I, I don't succumb yes. to peer pressure, so it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> this. So it, wasn't, it wasn't this Boulas guy. It was uh, this cast that got me. Uh, uh, we traded Boulas. <laughs> yeah, you're is that, that's what it is. It's Jan Boulas. That's yeah, he's tweeting? actually writing the, writing the blog. No, it's Harrison Mooney. Do we have the one, Tim, about his post-game ritual? Oh, man. Mine? Yeah. Yeah. You had said. Scott was mentioning something we're looking about your for it, But anyway, you ritual. had said. Man, what do I do? I don't know. you got to fill well, us Well, your in. quote was. You want to know. We're looking for it, that your post-game ritual was to go home, shave your chest, and go for a run along the seawall. You still doing that? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. No, right that now. was a quote. That's too bad we can't find yeah, it. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> too bad. So All that's right. you or Louie? <laughs> It's not Louie, no, that's okay. for sure. He's All got right. a hairy chest. You probably know that. Uh, here's a tweet from Josie. Oh, Would gosh. you ever pose naked like Ryan Kessler did? Probably not. No, probably not. And I'm sure he's not. I'm sure he's regretting it a, a little bit. Even though he won't admit, I'm sure he's regretting it a little bit. The, the guy's the, still chirping him the about heat it. The he took. Yeah, he, he got a little bit from everybody. Yeah. But sometimes you make uh, tough decisions. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but right. yes. He learned from it. Uh, just to try to say this on hockey terms, when you get new players in the room, that's a tough room to come into because there's a lot of talent, a lot of skill. And, and they're the only the first yeah. place team in the national. Yeah. No big deal. First overall in the NHL. Right. So when you get Cassian and, and Paulson uh, as newcomers in the room, what do you do to make them feel welcome? And Grognani, don't forget them. Yeah, and Mark yeah. Andre Grognani. Yeah, it's you know it's an easy room to come into. I think we have um, you know starting with the Twins, uh, a lot of humble guys in this team, and a lot of down to earth guys. So. I don't think uh, it's tough to come. I don't think it's intimidating to come in. You know, you see the kids running around after games. It's it's a pretty easygoing team. And Sammy, uh, Sammy's been around a long time. He's a veteran, so I don't think it's hard for him. And then the new kids we've taken in pretty, uh, you know, immediately. So it, it's I think it's been a good transition. Last it's time you were on the show, I got nominated <laughs> for Gemini. I'm not so sure about tonight. Your fault, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's <laughs> great. Yeah. All right. Thanks. 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 Yeah. Kevin BX, our guest on After Hours, back to conclude the proceedings at Rogers Arena in a moment.